Box 13, with the star of Paramount Pictures, Alan Ladd as Dan Holliday. Box 13. Box 13. Box 13. Box 13. Box 13. Copy, boy. Copy, boy. Hiya, Mr. Holliday. What do you say? Where's that society page, please? Hiya, Holliday. Hiya. Jerk the first paragraph in that Simmons story. Hiya, Dan. How are you? Hiya, Susie. Hiya, Mr. Holliday. What's in box 13? You are listening to Box 13, starring Alan Ladd as Dan Holliday. Now for Box 13, starring Alan Ladd as Dan Holliday. Well, here I am again, standing at the want ad counter of the Star Times, looking for what? An idea for a story. Hmm. I could have stayed here as a reporter. I could have been searching for facts. Instead, I'm fumbling for fiction. Instead of a blonde, I'm meeting a deadline. Instead of Chanel number five, I'm heading for a sniff of printer's ink. Holiday, you're a dope. Mr. Holiday. I... What's that, Susie? I said there's a letter in box 13 for you. It's special. Special? Special delivery. It was mailed only a couple of hours ago. Something like that could be important. Mm, could be. Could be adventure. Could be. Could be a... a girl. Could be. <laughs> By the way, Susie, how come you're working so late this evening? Oh, my boss asked me to. He's paying me overtime. Time and three quarters. Time and three quarters? Mm-hmm. I held out for double time when he offered me time and a half. Well, what happened? Oh, we effected a compromise. <laughs> Goodbye, Susie. Special delivery, huh? Well, this could be very important. Also, it couldn't. Well, come on, open it up, Holiday. You haven't got all night. I'm in terrible trouble. Please come to room 718 at the Bradford Hotel. Hurry. Signed, Agatha Marsh. Hmm, that sounds urgent. Who are you, young man? What do you want? I'm the man from Box 13. I'm looking for Agatha Marsh. I'm Agatha Marsh. Come in, come in. You're Agatha Marsh? Well, don't stand there with your mouth open. Never can tell who might be snooping around the hall. You'll find a chair and sit down. Now, what's your name? Uh, oh, Dan Holliday. Well, Mr. Holliday, I don't believe in drinking or I'd offer you one, but I have got some sauerkraut juice in my thermos bottle. Oh, uh, no, thanks. Just the same. I like you, Mr. Holliday. I liked your ad in the paper. Adventure wanted. We'll go any place, do anything. It was just what I needed. Well, thanks again. Now then, what's your charge? Charge? For helping me, your fee. Oh, that. No charge, Miss Marsh. Are you trying to be chivalrous? No, you see, I'm a writer. I'm looking for ideas. If I get a good idea, I consider I've been well paid. Well, that seems a little silly. Might I ask just what your trouble is? Oh, you don't think a girl my age could get into trouble, do you? Well, you look like a very charming old... Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, lady, oh, lady, let's not beat around the bush. Now, no doubt you want to know a few things about me. Well, that would be very interesting. Yes, well, I live in Muncie, Indiana, alone. I've got a big house and an independent income. Every year I go someplace for a vacation, and this year I came here. Uh, is that all? Isn't that enough? But the letter you wrote me, you said you were in terrible trouble. Well, I am. If anyone ever finds out about this, I don't know what'll happen. Finds out about what? Come over here to the closet. I want to show you something. Look. On the floor. Well, that's a dead man lying there. Well, this would make a good opening chapter for a story. 
Young man goes to help charming old lady who is in terrible trouble. Terrible trouble turns out to be a corpse. Corpse? Hey, wake up, Holiday. This is the real thing. Now. Now do you believe me, young man? When did you find him? Just before I wrote you that letter. Before you wrote the letter? Well, that's hours ago. I know, but what could I do? What could you do? Miss Marsh, you could call the police. And get my name in the papers. Have all the folks back in Muncie know there was a dead man in my room? Oh, no. Miss Marsh, listen to me, please. There's a dead man in that closet. There's a law about dead men. We have to notify the police immediately. You can go to jail for hiding a body. Oh, fiddlesticks. But, Miss Marsh, look at this man. He's been shot at close range. There are powder burns on his coat. I know. I examined him before I wrote you. You see, I read all the current detective stories. Detective stories? This isn't a story. This is the real thing. I know. Why don't you try to prove that I did it? With what? A cap pistol? Now, you're a nice person, Miss Marsh, but this is going to be tough. But don't get so excited. A girl my age could kill a man if she wanted to. Um, rub him out, as they say in the murder mysteries. Please, Miss Marsh, be sensible. You've got a murdered man in your closet. Now pick up that phone and call the police right away. Mr. Holliday, in all seriousness, I can't do it. Think of what my lifelong friends would say. Yes, yes, I know it doesn't look I good. I can see the headlines now. Prominent Muncie pioneer woman found with dead body in hotel. Oh, please, Mr. Holliday, help me. Well, I don't know. This is a little out of my department. Just this once, Mr. Holliday. I've never asked for help before. I, I'm an old woman. Well, all right. What do you want me to do? I want you to help me get rid of the body. Get rid of the body? Now, look, Miss Marsh, you're not serious. You didn't mean that. Oh, you don't know me. I fully intend to get rid of that body. Okay, go right ahead. It's your course. And you're going to help me. No, no, I'm sorry. Try a bellhop. And have him snitch to the desk clerk. Besides, you advertised for adventure. But this isn't adventure. It's a nightmare. Come on, Miss Marsh. Let me notify the police. Now, there's a broom closet down the hall. That's very interesting. I, I, I just remember, I'm, I'm meeting someone in the lobby. I'd take the body there myself, but I'm not strong enough. Goodbye, Miss Marsh. I'll scream. Go right ahead. The hotel detective will show up. Just a man I'd love to see. And I'll tell him you killed that man. Oh. Now, will you help me? Suppose we get caught. Then you'll help me. Now, wait a minute. You said we... Now, I'll open the door and watch the hall. Uh, case the joint, as they say in the mysteries. And then you whisk the body into the closet. You're strong. You can do it. Oh, sure. I'm strong, all right. But not in the head. Oh, this can't be happening to you, Holiday. You can't be dragging a body down the hall of the Bradford Hotel. You know better. And as soon as you can get away from this charming but cracked old gal, you're going to talk to the police. Harry, Harry, now, I'll open the closet door. Put him in right there. Stick him in good. There, there we are. I must be crazy. Oh, good, good. Now back into my room before anybody sees us. Isn't that easy? Easy, she says. Well, I must say you carry out your part very well. What's next in this little scheme of yours, Miss Marsh? Why don't you know? We have to find out who killed that Michael O'Brien. You know who he is? Well, I do now. I went through his pockets. Frisked him, as they say in the stories. Well, that cuts it. You stay here. I'm going downstairs. And... Who's that? Just keep cool. I'll handle everything. Oh, I can't believe this. It just can't happen. My name is Kling, Lieutenant Homicide Bureau. Oh, come in. Come in, won't you? I intend to. Holiday, what are you doing here? Hello, Lieutenant. Oh, do you two know each other? Never mind the social chatter. I thought this was some kind of a gag. Now I'm sure of it. Holiday, just what are you trying to dream up? If I told you, Kling, you'd never believe me. Sit down, Lieutenant. Uh, can I get you some sauerkraut juice? Well, I don't mind if... Uh, some what? Sauerkraut juice. Uh, no, thanks. Now, listen, somebody, some crackpot, phoned in a tip that there was a dead man in this room. Why, Lieutenant, how can you say such things? Lieutenant, now listen. You'll be quiet. Miss Marsh, mind if I have a look around? Not at all, not at all. Here's the closet. Now then, you can see for yourself, Lieutenant, there's nobody there. 
I got your name from the desk clerk, Miss Marsh. Maybe you better tell me about yourself. I can tell you all about it. I was talking to Miss Marsh. Are you Miss Marsh? Right now, I think I'm dead. You will be if you keep interrupting. Go ahead, Miss Marsh. Tell me about yourself. Certainly. I live in Muncie, Indiana. I arrived this morning for a two-week vacation. I'm well known back there, and you can find out everything about me if you care to wire. Uh-huh. Uh, how did you happen to meet Mr. Holliday here? Look, Lieutenant, if you'll permit me to tell I'm you... I'm asking the lady. I went to school with his mother. That's what I did. Huh? Oh, see. Well, I guess it was the work of some would-be comic. But I had to investigate it just the same. Well, of course you do. Oh, but Kling, listen. Goodbye, Mr. Marsh. So long, Holiday. But Kling, wait, I want to go with you. Why don't you two have a fast game of hearts? Mr. Holiday, wasn't that thrilling? Just like in the magazines. Miss Marsh, you're going to stay in this room until I get Kling back here. Oh, no, no, no. I want to solve this case myself. I wonder how Kling found out that Miss Marsh. Yes. I'm not the suspicious type, you understand, but a little bird, a, a tiny little bird has intimated that perhaps you might know who tipped off the lieutenant. Of course I know. It was I. What in the world are you doing? I made the call from the corner drugstore a little while ago. I wanted to throw the lieutenant off the trail, like they say. You know what I say? No, what? You're going down to police headquarters and tell the truth. Oh, just a second. Excuse me, please. Yes? Yes, this is Miss Marsh. Oh, you did? Yeah, I thought so. Yeah, it should have had 817 instead of this room. Oh, no, don't bother. I like it here. I knew it. I knew it all the time. What did you know? That was the room clerk. He got my reservation mixed up. I was supposed to get 817, and I got 718 instead. You mean the person who killed Michael O'Brien wanted to get back in here to remove the body? No, 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 it doesn't sound reasonable. No, it doesn't. Uh, well, guess who was supposed to get this room? Never mind, we're going to police headquarters. It was Tony Bascari. Tony Bascari? He's the biggest racketeer in town. He's dynamite. Miss Marsh, he's deadly. I know, Mr. Holliday, and I love it. Oh, no, no. <laughs> You are listening to Box 13, starring Alan Ladd as Dan Holliday. Now back to Box 13, starring Alan Ladd as Dan Holliday. Two o'clock in the morning and I can't go to sleep. Oh, that little old girl has me worried to death. She wouldn't go to the police headquarters and when I went down and talked to Kling, he acted as though it were a big joke and sent me on my way. Hello. This is Agatha Marsh. Now what? Where are you? At the hotel. I went up to see Tony Bascari. You what? Miss Marsh, don't you know that's the worst thing you could have done? I had to talk with him. I put the heat on him, as they say in the murder mysteries. And you're still alive? I accused him of killing that O'Brien man. I came right out with it. But of course, he wouldn't admit a thing. What do you expect him to do, break down and confess? Well, I think I've got him on the run. But I'm worried. Oh, if I had Tony Bascari on the run, I'd be worried too. Because when I came back, I discovered someone had searched my room. Will you call the police? You should have done it a long time ago. Oh, no, 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 I couldn't. I want you to come over right away. At two in the morning? Mr. Holliday, someone's trying my door. Hang up quick. Call the room clerk. But, Mr. Holliday, I... Hurry, I said. A dear little meddlesome old fool. Into your clothes, Holliday, because here we go again. And don't forget your Boy Scout badge. You'll make the beaver patrol tonight. The clerk said she hadn't called the desk. I wonder... No, she would have screamed. Someone would have heard her. It's open. Cleaned out completely. No Miss Marsh, no clothes, no nothing. Not even a piece of notepaper. Hey, what's this? Paper airplane. Like the ones I used to make in school. 
But why should she be making paper airplanes? Airplanes. The airport, that's where they took her. Keep that motor running, I'll be right back. Not many people around this hour of the night. Oh, there she is. And the man with her has his hand in his pocket, and I don't think it's there because it's cold. What I need now is a little fast talk and a little faster action. Okay, I'll take over from here. Uh, who are you? What are you talking about? The old doll. Bass Carey wants her back. Bass Carey told me to put her on a plane. I'm doing it. Yeah? He changed his mind. He wants her back. I don't think so. Besides, I never saw you before. I told you, if you don't turn her over, Bass Carey might get sore. When did he call me? It's only a half hour ago. I was still at the hotel. He could have called. And spilled everything over our phone. You're nuts. This don't sound right. Yeah, forget it. I'm taking the old doll back with me. Wait a minute. I'm gonna call Tony first. Go ahead, stupid. Get your ears burned off. Who are you calling, stupid? Show me something that'll prove Tony sent you. Got a match? Stop stalling. This is a gun in my pocket. Let's talk to Tony. Yeah, I, I've got some matches here. Thanks. Here. Oh! Get him, Mr. Holiday, quick. I'm coming. Oh, not so fast. Oh, I, I'm not as young as I used to be. You should have remembered that before you got mixed up in this. Come on, get in. Would you push? Driver, get out of here fast. Uh, what did you uh, do to that guy anyway? I, I stuck him with my hat pin. I might have guessed it. Now, Miss Marsh, what happened at the hotel? Well, I hung up when I heard him trying the door, but I was too late. The door was unlocked. So it was Tony Bascari, huh? He wanted you out of town fast. Oh, but they were very nice to me. You can thank your lucky stars for that. Usually, Bascari's enemies wind up in some ditch. I didn't see him again. That man, the one you knocked out at the airport, he was the one who came in my room. Well, you must have the goods on Bascari. You must have killed this man or had him killed. But why didn't he take him out of the hotel right away? But there was a convention there last night. The whole place was literally crawling with people. Oh, that's the reason. Oh, that paper airplane. That was fast thinking, Miss Marsh. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> well, now we can go back to Bascari. We've got the goods on him. We can crack the case like they say in the murder mysteries. Miss Marsh, I've got news for you. We're not going to see Bascari. We're not? Well, where are we going? You'll hate me, I know, but it's the police station. Well, Holiday, what happens now? You've taken Miss Marsh to Kling's office. She looks at him. He nods her into his private office. And suddenly she comes out smiling. You try to leave, only Kling stops you. You stay here, Holiday. Kling, you can't let her walk the streets alone. Bass Curry will get her. Forget it. I got a man tailing her. Okay, okay, but what happened in that office? What did she tell you? Plenty, my friend. She preferred charges against you. She preferred charges against me? Now, what are you talking about? Kidnapping. I kidnapped her? You took her off the plane by force, didn't you? Listen, Kling, that little old lady is a whodunit happy. She'll get herself killed. There really was a body in the hotel, you know. Look, Holiday, do you know what you're saying? Sure, I know what I'm saying. There really was a body in that hotel. Holiday, why didn't you tell me? I tried to, twice. Once in the room and the last time when I came in here. Now think, Holiday, carefully. Where is the body? In a broom closet down the hall. I put it there. You put it there? Yes, I put it there. Holiday, get out of here. <laughs> Well, Holiday, now you're fixed. Even Kling looked at you like those things in your belfry weren't bats. They're more like eagles. But you're in it now, so you've got to follow through. And that indicates a fast ride over to the Bradford Hotel. Oh, clerk. Hey, clerk. Uh, yes? I'd like to find out who occupied Agatha Marsh's room the day before she did. Uh, that question is highly irregular. Oh? Then here's a $10 bill that's highly regular. 
Oh, <clears throat> uh, let me think. Uh, she has 718. She checked in day before yesterday. Yes. The man who had the room before that was a traveling salesman in uh, lady suits, I believe. Uh, he must have cut quite a figure. <laughs> She must be in this hotel someplace. Her room's empty, but she must be around. But where? Uh, what are you worrying about, Holiday? You couldn't wait to get rid of her. Now you can't wait to get her back. Uh, you're a character who belongs back in the Middle Ages with a tin union suit for cold nights. Uh, she'll probably show up safely with that detective tailing her. The broom closet. Wonder if the dead man is still in there. Must be. Kling hasn't showed up yet. Oh, 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 hello, Mr. Holiday. Miss Marsh, what happened? How'd you get in that closet? Isn't this thrilling? No, it isn't. There was a detective trailing me, but he was knocked unconscious. Sapped, as they say in the murder mysteries. And you were brought up here? By the same man who tried to put me on the plane. He hit the detective, put me in the car, and brought me here. Well, you two, what are we playing now? And where is the man I put on you, Miss Marsh? He was hit over the head, Lieutenant, but I'm sure he's all right now. This the closet where you said the body was? Was is right, Lieutenant. Yeah, let me take a look. You know what I think, Holiday? What? I think both of you crackpots are making this all up. I don't believe there ever was a body. Kling, you have my word for it. Your word doesn't mean as much as a Chinese dollar. Kling, listen. They brought her back here, locked her up. They took the body away, didn't they, Miss Marsh? Probably going to sink it in cement, as they say in the murder mysteries. Bascari's in his room, I'll bet. Go up and talk to him. Surely, put the heat on him. Just once more, I'll play with you kiddies. Come along. Where? Miss Marsh's room. I'm locking you pixies in till I get to the bottom of this. <laughs> been gone 15 minutes. I wonder what's happening up there. Not much. I haven't heard any shooting. No, that's... I haven't heard any... In that case, how could a man be shot here and that shot not be heard? Oh, it's very easy, Mr. Holliday. The, the killer would use this. Oh, Miss Marsh, now where'd you get that gun? Just took it out of the drawer. It was here all the time. Well, put it down until Kling returns. But I just want to show you why the shot wouldn't be heard. What do you mean? Would you excuse me, please? You see this bath towel, Mr. Holliday? Yes, what about it? Well, a smart person would take the gun like this, wrap the bath towel around it like this. You know, Miss March, you found out a lot since you came here. Oh, yes, I've done all right since early this morning. Early this morning? But the clerk said... I talked to Tony Biscari and he said... Hang look out! <laughs> Here, Miss Marsh, give me that thing. You shouldn't have moved, Mr. Holliday. I was really shooting at you. What's this all about, Holliday? What was she doing with that gun in her hand? She was going to kill me, just like she killed Michael O'Brien. That little old lady killing somebody? Miss Marsh, you, you did kill him, didn't you? Then you called me, and you got Kling to come up here and catch me dragging the body away. Only he came a little late. As usual. Now, wait a minute, Holiday. Then when you couldn't pin it on me, you tried to hang it on Tony Biscari. Now, what did you do with the body? Dragged it back to the closet in this room. Oh. And I suppose you sapped the detective who followed you, too. It was easy. I got him to turn around and hit him over the head with my purse. Why did you kill Michael O'Brien? Did you have something against him? No, no. I never saw him before. Then why kill a perfect stranger? I saw a play once. I liked those ladies in that play. They killed lots of people. I wanted to also. Only I should have done it like the ladies. You don't mean arsenic and old lace. Yes, and I should have worn the lace and given you the arsenic. <laughs> Holiday, you're back in your apartment again. The sun is shining through the window, a sun you might never have seen again. You know, I've got an idea for you, Holiday. Give up this business and go into something quiet, like night watchman in a cemetery. Holiday. Uh, 
Well, what's that, Clint? They examined the old girl down at the psychopathic ward of the city hospital. She's batty as a loon. You're telling me. I saw that in her eyes when she wrapped the towel around that gun. But uh, what happened to Bascari and his stooge? When she heard he was in the room above, she tried to pin the body on him. Oh, so he tried to get her out of town in self-defense. Mm. Holiday, you're a very lucky, lucky guy. You can say that again and again. And again. Oh, just a minute. Hello, Mr. Holiday. Susie, what are you doing up here in my apartment? Why aren't you down at the Star Times? Well, my boss and I have been talking about another compromise. Another one? He wants to fire me, and I want to quit. Oh, but Susie, if you left the paper, what would I do for my mail? I was thinking, maybe you'd like to hire a good combination stenographer and secretary, huh? That's you? That's me. Well, I don't know, Susie, but as they say in murder mysteries, I'll have to think it over. You better think fast. Good help is hard to find. Goodbye, Susie. <laughs> Next week, same time, Alan Ladd stars as Dan Holliday in Box 13. Alan Ladd appears through the courtesy of Paramount Pictures and may currently be seen in Wild Harvest. Box 13 is written and directed by Ted Hedegar. Original music was composed and conducted by Rody Schrager. This is a Mayfair production. Yeah.